Okay, absolutely disgusting loss. I didn't even really watch much, if any, of the second half whatsoever. Maybe about one minute. Uh, Brad Stevens, man, just terrible coaching job. Terrible, terrible. We're underhanded. We're lo- we're without Kyrie Irving, starting point guard. We're without Marcus Morris, borderline starter or sixth man, seventh man anyway, right? And then we're without Gordon Hayward. That goes without saying. But what do you do when, you're, when your best player is out of the game? Do you play your other good players a little bit more minutes, especially if your team doesn't have anybody among the top 50 or 75 or 100 most minutes players in the NBA, whatever it is? These guys never play more than 31, 32, 33 minutes. If you're ever going to do that, wouldn't the game that Kyrie Irving is out and Marcus Morris, wouldn't that be a good time? to play some of your solid players a little more than their average one time to get a freaking win. So Tatum with a very off night, but only playing 29 minutes. Marcus Smart only plays 31 minutes. And uh, Al Horford only plays 31 minutes, okay, at a, in a game where we really needed more minutes from our quality guys. Uh, Shemi Ojale only plays 12 minutes. And Terry Rozier only plays 28 minutes. What Would it have killed them to play Terry Rozier 35 minutes one freaking time? And Marcus Smart 35 as well. Was there any real reason that Shane Larkin had to play one or two minutes, more than one or two minutes? What is Abdul Nader doing in the game? And why are we playing two third string chump change guys? Abdul Nader and Shane Larkin together on the court in the first half and then when they're getting absolutely destroyed brad stevens calls a timeout and what does he do he puts them right back out there to continue getting absolutely demolished so it's like brad stevens went in there with a plan that he was going to play his third string guys big minutes together without any real starters on the court with them in the first half and that was somehow going to go well enough that we were going to pull out the swing so it almost feels like an intentional tank job on the part of Brad Stevens. But, you know, when you when you give up a 15-point lead in the first half like that, it's not going to go well. And uh, Brad Stevens just doubled down on dumb this time, you know, kind of like the first time we played the Pistons where he refused to play Aaron Baines and we just watched Al Horford get bullied by Andre Drummond over and over and over all through the first half, and then all through the fourth quarter as well. It wouldn't kill Brad Stevens to play his better players, his rotation, first and second string guys, a few more minutes, considering the absence of their best player, Kyrie Irving. There was no need whatsoever to dip way into the third string guys and just throw them out there and just let them, look, minus 24 points, for Shane Larkin in 17 minutes, and even worse, or just as bad, Abdul Nader in 16 minutes minus 21. And in the first half, it was like he had played like six minutes, and they were like minus 13 or something like that. So in six minutes, the Celtics were down 13 points with Abdul Nader and Shane Larkin playing together and without any starters in there with these guys, just getting absolutely destroyed. I don't know, guys, whatever. It's just one game, but uh, just it didn't need to be like this. And I think the Bulls are underrated. They have now won three in a row, right? They've gone from worst in the league to right there with a bunch of teams in that six, seven, eight win level. So congrats to them. They definitely played a good game. Chris Dunn making big improvements on the offensive side of the ball to go along with this good defense. So, uh, you know, they shot lights out, it looks like. 41% from three, but it just didn't need to be like this, guys. Maybe we would have lost anyway, but there's no reason to lose that disgusting amount. Let me know what you think. I'll see you soon. Peace.